Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here, and welcome to your Insect Glaive Weapon Workshop for Monster Hunter Rise. Weapon Workshops are our definitive guides to all the weapons, going over everything you could possibly want to know, starting with the basic behavior and the moves, all the way up to the lesser known techniques, recommended combos, armor skills, combat strategies, and more. Essentially, everything you could possibly need to know about your chosen weapon, so that you can confidently take down whatever monster stands in your way. If you guys do enjoy this video and you do find it helpful, a like would be super appreciated. A ton of work and research goes into each and every one of these. So if you like them, let me know down below and share them with your friends if they're trying to pick up a new weapon. You can also find a link to the full playlist down below. We will be covering all 14 weapons, so keep it locked as they get added. Now let's talk about the Insect Glyph. If you want to become King of the Skies, an aerial mobility master, then this is the weapon for you. Part Staff, Part Kinsect. This weapon has an array of fast, fluid, and relatively long-reaching attacks thanks to the Sun Wukong style staff, or glaive, should I say. Meanwhile, you also have access to a little companion of sorts, the Kinsect, which you'll use to gather extracts from the monster that you're fighting to further buff up your hunter and your attacks. It's a fun, stylish, and completely unique weapon whose mobility synergizes incredibly well with the new wirebug mechanics. Pair that with some fantastic new aerial buffs and changes in rise, and you have a recipe for some unmatched airborne destruction. A true master of the skies. While the Insect Glaive is not a hugely complex weapon when it comes to combos, in fact the Glaive portion of this weapon is relatively easy to pick up. The one thing you do need to understand beforehand is the Kinsect, since good use of this weapon will rely heavily on this arm mounted bug companion. The Kinsect isn't like your Palico or your Palamut companions that you can simply forget about. It is something you actively need to use and manage to maximize the potential of the weapon. And as such, it's important that we cover the fundamentals first before diving into the weapon moves. It's also important to note that there are different types of Kinsects too, and while they all control the same way, their behaviours do differ. However, for this basics portion of the video, we'll simply cover the fundamentals, and then we'll touch on the different Kinsect types a little bit later in this video. You can control the Kinsect in combat by either sending it out directly in front of you, or by marking a monster so that it homes in on a select location. And following this, you can recall it. I'll go over exactly how you do this in the move section shortly. But for now, it's important to understand that sending the Kinsect out is what you do to gather the necessary buffs. When it collides with a monster, it will collect a certain colour extract depending on where you hit it. The extracts are red, orange and white. The locations can vary, but generally speaking, red comes from the head of the monster, orange from the back or the chest, and white from the wings or the legs. You can also gather extract from small monsters too, but each small monster only yields one type of extract. Once gathered, calling back your Kinsect will consume these and add them to the gauge at the top of the screen. On their own, the individual colours provide small buffs, but together they provide even more. The red buff gives you access to more powerful combos. This is an absolute must, as you'll see when we touch on the moves and combos shortly. So much so that this should be a staple in your play. Gathering red extract as a bare minimum should really come before you even think about engaging in combat. This buff on its own lasts for 60 seconds. Next up you have the white buff, which increases your movement speed and jump height, handy for getting around and generally being more mobile, and this buff standalone lasts for 90 seconds. And then finally the orange one gives you knockback protection, and this on its own lasts for 120 seconds. In previous games there was also a green buff, which was consumed upon recall, and this gave you a small heal, but that's no longer present in Rise, apart from with a select silk by move, and honestly it's much better, green was really just a bit of a waste of time. However, as mentioned, there are also hybrid effects that come from combining some of those extracts. Red and white together will not only give you access to the more powerful combos and the movement speed and jump height buffs, but it will also give you a small attack boost, as you can see here. 
this double buff also lasts for 60 seconds, i.e. the duration of the shortest extract, which is red. Meanwhile, orange and white together, this will give you the movement speed, jump height and knockback prevention, and it will also give you max grade earplugs, which is something that was not present in World. This buff lasts 90 seconds. And then finally you have the triple buff, all three extracts together. This gives you the more powerful combos, the movement speed, jump height and knockback resistance, the earplugs, and it also gives you a bigger attack boost, as you can see here. This triple buff will last for 90 seconds. It should go without saying that the triple buff is ideally the goal when using this weapon. However, it is worth noting that on some monsters, the orange buff can be a little bit annoying to grab, so sometimes, just so you can dive into battle quickly, grabbing red and white for the more damaging combos in the attack boost is a great opener. Plus, as a handy trick, you can grab this double buff initially and run with it to get some good opening damage, then as you begin to close in on the 60 second timer, when the buff would expire, if you then grab orange, you get the triple buff and the timer resets, giving you 90 seconds on the clock. So this is a good way to maximize your red uptime. And just so you're aware, the indicator that your buff is close to finishing is when the diamonds begin to flash. Typically, when they begin flashing fast, you have around 10 seconds remaining. The other thing to keep in mind is that your Kinsect also has its own stamina bar. When you send it out, you can issue multiple commands, but each time you do, it uses up a bit of stamina. If this runs out, it'll automatically return to you with whatever it's holding, but calling it back will also see the stamina recharge over time. As you'll see a little later, some Kinsects regenerate stamina faster, and you also have a Silk by move that can help with this too. But again, that's something we'll speak more about shortly. For now, just so you understand the core concept for this weapon, you use your Kinsect to gather extracts which buff up your Hunter and your moves, and you then take advantage of these buffs to dish out maximum damage. When your buffs run out, you gather them again and repeat. Simple, right? Now before we dive in and cover all of your available moves, it's first important to talk about your available switch skills, since these will alter your combos and your playstyle. Switch skills are a mechanic in Monster Hunter Rise that allow you to swap out select moves and silk binds for your weapon to create your own personalized hunting style. Each weapon has three slots, and each slot has two skills to choose from. There is no right or wrong choice here, however some skills do align better with certain playstyles so it's important to understand their uses. I'll offer some suggestions a little bit later in this video. For the Insect Glaive, in your first slot by default you have the Leaping Slash. This is an overhead slice you perform either when drawing your weapon, or with forward and A with your weapon drawn. It's a quick move, good for opening combos, and has the added benefit that it can negate knockbacks, even without the orange buff. So it's handy if you want to open a combo without getting tripped. It's also relatively high reaching, and it's a nice way to close the gap if the monster is a little further out. So overall, it's a fast and reliable move. However, your alternate option here is the Advancing Round Slash. This is a move that sees you dash forward like a spinning top, and again, it's either performed on the Unsheath or on Forward and A. And while it's slower than the Leaping Slash, it has got a rather interesting property. See, if you're attacked during this spin, it acts sort of like a guard point, in that instead of getting knocked back, you're instead launched up into the air, putting you in prime position to go into some of your aerial attacks. And, as we'll discuss later on in the move section, there are some very interesting changes to the aerial insect glaive's behaviour in Rise. So this is actually an incredibly useful move. It does just take some time to get used to. Then, in your second slot, by default you have the Tornado Slash. This move is only accessible if you have the red buff, and it's a strong slash performed after a bludgeoning attack at the end of your combo. This is a move that you'll be familiar with if you've used this weapon before, as it's one of your strongest single hits with the Glaive. It's a great combo ender, and something that you'll make frequent use of during ground combat. It's also worth noting, since it's an incredibly strong attack, it's great at causing monsters to flinch too. However, your alternate option is the Tetra Seal Slash. This is an attack that delivers 4 strikes on the spot in this very cool animation. It is important to note though, that during this attack you are locked in place, sort of like the Dual Blades Demon Dance. But one of these attacks also hits with the back of the glaive, which in turn is a good way to lure in powder type kinsects, which we'll explain a little bit later. Now on the damage front, while Tornado Slash has the stronger single hit attack, this has more overall damage, but the time commitment is larger. It's also worth noting, with this move, as soon as it's finished, you can dive right back into your combo. So despite the longer commitment, it is possible to more seamlessly weave this back into your combos. So both options have value. Then finally, in your third slot, you have your Silkbine options. First up is Recall Kinsect. This is an emergency evasion that not only sees your hunter leap back, but also recalls your Kinsect in the process. 
As the Kinsec returns, assuming it's close enough to the monster, it can also grab a small heal on the way back, and upon returning, it will fully recover its own stamina. Since green extract is no longer a thing, this is, technically speaking, a way to get a small heal. It's also worth noting that while this move can't be initiated from the air, following this move you can very quickly dive straight back into your aerial moves. So while it might not look that appealing at first, the fact that this can very quickly call back your Kinsect, which in turn returns the extract it gathers, offer you a small heal, and position you to dive back into your aerial moves, it does have some great utility. Meanwhile, your second option is the Diving Wyvern. This is similar behaviour to a move introduced in Iceborne for the Glaive. This sees you dive down in this sort of plunging attack, only now it's done from the Wirebug. When performed, this performs this very strong diving attack that pulls you directly downwards, plunging your Glaive into whatever is beneath you. The damage radius is incredibly small, so you do have to be precise, but the damage output is definitely worth it. It's also important to note that this can be performed both from the ground and in mid-air, so you can cancel some of your aerial actions directly into this when you are positioned correctly. Furthermore, the damage output from this also scales. See, something we'll be touching on very shortly is the aerial combat buff for this weapon. I'll be going over this in much greater detail in the next section, but for some quick context, performing certain aerial attacks essentially sees the glaive's aerial damage scale up or level up. Sort of how consecutive shots with the bow sees the shots power up. Performing a diving wyvern off the back of a number of aerial movements will then also see the damage of this attack increase. So perfect use of this move actually requires a little setup, but it synergizes incredibly well for the aerial masters out there. But as you can see, there's a number of cool options to choose from for a selection of different playstyles. Again, I'm going to offer my personal picks later on, but for now, let's talk about the moves. Starting off with your weapon sheath, pushing forward an X will see you draw into an overhead slash, the leaping slash by default. Meanwhile, pressing forward an X with the other switch skill equipped will instead result in the advancing round slash, which we just covered. Again, remember, getting hit during this will launch you airborne, so consider using this in anticipation of an incoming attack. Meanwhile, pressing ZR with your weapon sheath will instead allow you to draw directly into sending your Kinsect out to gather which is handy if you want to open directly into grabbing, say, red extract from a monster's face. Now, with the Insect Glaive, your first priority, as mentioned, should always be to get your buffs from your extract, since doing this will give you access to more powerful damaging combos, and as such, that should be your primary focus any time the buff wears off. However, in the interest of covering all combos, we will begin with your unbuffed moves, just so you know what they are, but just keep in mind you won't be using these too much, since any time your buff wears off, you should really just be regathering your extracts. Anyway, that aside, pressing X three times will perform a rising slash into a reaping slash, then finishing with a double slash. The combo itself is nice, but again, when buffed, it's even better. Pushing forward next performs a quick thrust, and you can then sub out the first X input from the X combo with a forward thrust instead going forward XX. Pressing A two times consecutively will perform a wide sweep into an overhead smash, and pressing forward and A will again perform either the leaping slash if you have that selected, or the advancing round slash if you chose that instead. This is handy to know in the event that you want to use the round slash into an incoming attack and your weapon is drawn. You can also link these two together by putting an A attack at the end of your X combo to finish it with an overhead smash, but again, you won't be using this one too much since the buff combo is infinitely better. The Insect Glaive also offers great aerial mobility, so holding down ZR and pressing B will see you vault into the air, and you can then input a direction with this command to influence the direction that you vault. Once in the air, pressing X will perform a jumping slash. Meanwhile, pressing B will perform a mid-air evade, which is a handy repositioning air dash and pressing A will perform a jumping advancing slash. This move is special because if it connects with the monster, you will launch back up into the air, at which point you can then go again. But once again, the buffed version is much better. You can also chain these together for some aerial repositioning before landing, so you can go say ZRB to launch up, B for another dash, and then A. And you can of course mix and match these as you see fit, but just keep in mind you can't do two of the same move back to back. Now let's talk about gathering extract, since this is of course the uh, crux of using this weapon. Holding down ZR and pressing X will send your Kinsect out in front of you, where you're aiming, and pressing ZR and A will call it back. As a reminder, when your Kinsect connects with the monster, it will grab a colour extract, and when you call it back, it will store it in the UI that you see at the top of the screen here. We cover the buff types in the intro, but as a reminder, typically red extract comes from the monster's head, white usually from the legs or the arms, and orange typically from the chest or the back, or the more defensive points. 
Now, if you hold down ZR and press ZL, you will instead fire out a tracking mark onto the monster. You can also press ZR and R if you prefer. With this in place, when you fire out the Kinsect, it'll then home in on this location and grab extracts. Additionally, as you'll see later, certain Kinsect types have another interaction with this marker, and sending them out will also see them continually dive bomb this location. But that's only select types, so we'll touch on that later on. Additionally, following any attack, you can press ZR to hit the monster with the back of your glaive. Doing so also leaves a mark for your Kinsect to home in on, and this attack also does impact damage, so it does have moderate KO potential. Now, with all of that covered, let's go over your buffed combos, which are, in truth, what you'll be using most of the time. Remember, these are accessed by having at least the red buff active. Pressing X three times consecutively will now perform a strong rising slash, strong reaping slash, and strong double slash. Same input as the unbuffed, but as you can now see, it does considerably more damage, and the combo itself has more hits. Similarly, your forward X is now a strong thrust, your double A input is now either a strong wide sweep into a tornado slash, if you have that selected. Again, remember the final hit of tornado slash is one of your strongest single hit attacks and will be used as a finisher for some of your more powerful ground combos. Alternatively, if you have the tetra seal slash equipped, then that second A input will instead perform that attack. Again, keep in mind, while the move is in motion, you cannot roll out of it, but you can roll out at the very end to cancel the ending lag animation, or you can simply press X to weave straight back into a combo. This move has more hits and does more overall damage than the Tornado Slash, plus has the added benefit of leaving behind a mark for your Kinsect, which has some great synergy with the Powder type Kinsects. But again, keep in mind the Tornado Slash is quicker and has higher single hit damage with great flinch potential, so both moves have value. And then finally, the forward A input is again the same Leaping Slash or Advancing Round Slash depending on what you have equipped. Now, moving on from there, you now have a nice infinite combo, pressing X, X, and A will keep you rooted to the spot, and this avoids using the typical combo enders, which will often move you forwards, out of place. This is also the opening for one of your stronger ground-based combos. Typically, you would loop this while you have an opening, and then when the monster is about to move, or your opening is beginning to close, then working in the second A attack as either Tornado Slash or Tetra Seal Slash can finish the combo for some nice damage. However, there is also an advanced technique that you can employ here to essentially cancel some of the ending lag animations for your combos, and that is using the Kinsect for help. See, some of your combos have some ending lag to them. Typically, you would roll out of these, but thanks to the Kinsect, you can also cancel these. Following a combo, pressing ZR and A to recall your Kinsect will cancel that ending animation, allowing you to more quickly dive back into the combo. The Kinsect doesn't already have to be sent out to perform this either, it can still be attached to your arm. But by performing the action, it is essentially a quick and easy way to dive back into your next attack more quickly. This then means, if you use some of your stronger attacks, like your A combo, which ends in Tornado Slash, you can very quickly cancel the ending lag from a Tornado Slash and dive straight back into your heavy hitting A combo. It's also worth noting you can perform this same cancel by instead sending the Kinsec out. The main reason I defer to Kinsec Recall is if you have an assist type, then of course having it on your arm primes it to join you in your attacks, but by sending it out you do get some additional ticks of damage. Either way, both can be used to cancel your animations. It'll take some practice, but if you want to avoid having to roll or linger on some hits, this is a very useful technique. Outside of that, the red buff also gives you some new tricks in your aerial movements too. Pressing ZR and B to vault up into the sky, and then pressing X will now perform the strong jumping slash. Your mid-air dodge is still the same, so ZR and B into B. Meanwhile, your advancing slash now becomes the strong advancing slash, where instead of a single swipe, you now perform this helicopter motion with multiple spin attacks. And again, the final hit of this is the one that launches you back up into the air. It's important to note, performing these moves uses a little bit of stamina. However, even if you have plenty of bar left, you can only perform a total of three of these back to back. Attempting to do a fourth will see you land down on the ground regardless. However, even more exciting is that this style of play in Monster Hunter Rise is now more viable than ever. See, aerial attacks have received some serious buffs in this game. If any of you used Insect Glaive in World or Iceborne, you'll know that aerial movements were great for mounting, but when it came to dealing damage with this weapon, ground combos were really where it's at. And while your ground combos do still dish out impressive damage, so too do your aerial combos now. See, Insect Glaive has a new trick. This is not reflected on the UI, but you can see it in the damage numbers. You can sort of liken the Glaive to the bow, or the hammer, or the greatsword, in that it essentially, behind the scenes, has charge levels. Not quite in the same way, you're not going to be holding down a button to charge up your glaive, 
But for every aerial attack action you perform, the glaive essentially increases a level, and for each level your aerial damage goes up. This then means when paired with the Diving Wyvern and Siltbind attack from earlier, you can perform a string of aerial movements and then pull off this to finish and the damage difference is like night and day. Furthermore, when paired with the Advancing Slash, if you perform this into an attack, this actually counts as your first aerial movement assuming that you are launched, essentially jumping you straight into level 2 as a shortcut, meaning you only need to perform two more aerial movements and you're at max. Keep in mind, a simple mid-air evade does not increase the level, so this does have to be done with either the advancing round slash from the ground, or the advancing slash in the air. Also keep in mind that it won't always be viable to string together three aerial movements, but sometimes just one or two and a diving wyvern is enough. I mean, diving wyvern does huge damage regardless, but the increase from even one advancing slash is big, so depending on your opening, you'll just have to adjust how many aerial movements you perform. This will take some practice, but this new system is massive for Glaive players because it now truly allows you to lean into the design ethos for this weapon. You can now become a King of the Skies. Of course, outside of your vault attacks, you also have the standard jump attacks when swinging through the sky or leaping off of ledges. Pressing X will perform a strong jumping slash if buffed, or a jumping slash if unbuffed. And new in Rise, well, sort of. This functionality did exist in World, but it was linked to climbable walls. Meanwhile in Rise, you can do it on any surface. If you vault into the air with ZR and B whilst pushing forward into a wall, you will cling onto the wall. From here, you can then press any button to jump off the wall, and you can then press forward and B again to dash back. You can use this to slowly climb walls and surfaces, so it's uh, kind of handy from an exploration point of view. Again, this was kind of present in World, but only on vines and climbable surfaces, so now you can do it wherever you like. Outside of this, you also have your other Siltbine move, the Siltbine Vault. This will see you leap up into the air using your wire bug, and from there, much like if you vaulted off the ground, you can either press X, B or A for your available aerial moves. What's nice about this move though, is that it can also be performed in the air, so it can provide you with even greater aerial mobility and repositioning options. Now, that's pretty much all of your moves covered, so the last thing we need to speak about are the different Kinsec types. I have actually done a dedicated video on this, which you can check out if you want something standalone, but in the interest of ensuring that this guide gives you everything, let's go over them quickly. Kinsecs no longer need to be upgraded, they can simply be purchased directly from the smithy. They have an attack type, a Kinsec type, and a bonus. Under attack type, you either have severing or blunt, just like weapons. If you want your Kinsec to, on the off chance, be able to cut tails, you have severing. Or if you want the occasional KO, then you have blunt. As for the Kinsec types, you have normal, which are just for the starter Kinsecs, nothing exciting here. You then have powder types, and these are the ones that synergize with the marked spots we spoke about earlier. These Kinsecs will dive bomb marked locations, not only dealing damage, but also leaving powder behind in the process. This powder comes in different types, and when struck, will detonate. Powder types will vary, but they're all pretty self-explanatory. Heal, poison, paralysis, or blast. Next, you have the assist type Kinsecs. When you have the triple buff active, they will attack with you during the end of some of your more powerful combos, typically your A attacks and your diving wyvern. And then finally, you have the speed type Kinsecs, which will charge up when they're on your arm, going blue, and then when you send them out, they deal increased damage on the first hit. Call on the back and let them charge again allows you to take advantage of this again. And then finally, you have the bonuses. For the assist types, you have dual color Kinsecs, which will grab two extracts at once, making gathering much easier and faster. These are broken into dual color attack, which deal more damage, or dual color speed, which are faster. You then have the auto attack frequency up, which will see powder type Kinsecs attack a location more before returning or idle stamina recovery, which will see them regenerate stamina faster once they return. And then for the speed types, you have the charged chain attack, which when charged, will see it dive bomb the location a few times, dealing good damage. Keep in mind, this only happens once it's charged. Or you have fast charge types, which when they return to you, will charge the blue power state much quicker. There are no good or bad Kinsecs per se, just the ones that you find more useful. However, that being said, if you're looking for a recommendation, I personally use the Carnage Beetle, which is a dual color attack assist type. The main reason for this is that while speed wise it's not as fast as a speed type Kinsect, the dual color gathering makes getting the triple buff super quick anyway. Pair that with the fact that this assist type attacks with you, it's some nice added damage into your combos. And since this is the attack type, it's higher damage than the speed type. I also go for the Carnage Beetle over the Monarch Alucanid simply because I like Blunt. If I'm attacking the head, the assist nature means that I have a chance of getting a KO from this, which is obviously a nice opening when it happens. So, as you can now begin to see, while the Insect Glaive isn't a hugely complex weapon, there are a few components to get your head around. But, 
learn to master them and you'll have a ton of fun with this weapon. So, now that we've covered all the moves, let's talk about some recommended combos. Do keep in mind that the combos you use will vary depending on your opening. Some of your bigger, heavy hitting options are great, but if the time commitment is too large and the opening too small, then they will serve very little value. So in this section we'll cover a number of available options for various openings and scenarios. First up, assuming you have Tornado Slash selected and at least red buff, then your simple double A input, which is strong wide sweep into Tornado Slash with a quick Kinsect recall cancel at the end, is a fast repeatable combo. This does good damage, is quick, keeps you mobile, and the last hit of Tornado Slash is also a great flinch and part breaking move. This will be one of your easiest and most used quick damage ground combos. Alternatively, another ground combo you have at your disposal is the one mentioned earlier that you can loop, XXA. This removes the final hit of the A combo, the Tornado Slash, but keeps you rooted on the same spot and this can be looped indefinitely. It's a good damage multi-hit combo, handy for racking up some status hits or dishing out some decent damage. Of the two just listed, the first combo will be used a little bit more frequently, but this is a good alternate option and also applies if you have Tetra Seal Slash too. Of course, following that, your standalone Diving Wyvern is just a strong move. It's not really a combo, but launching yourself up into the sky, dashing towards the monster and simply pulling off a dive mid-air alone does some good damage and is useful for very small openings. This Siltbind move is fast to recharge, so it's a fairly repeatable option and it's just useful, again as mentioned, when your opening is small. However, as an extension of that, when the window is there and the opportunity presents itself, then preceding that dive with some strong advancing slashes will, as discussed earlier, scale up the damage of the Wyvern dive as well as the aerial movements. Obviously, pulling off all three strong advancing slashes will yield the most damage, but you won't often have the window for that, so adapt based on your opening. Often, performing an advancing slash over, say, a laser beam or a fireball is a great way to close the gap, get a free launch, and set yourself up nicely for the following dive. Just keep in mind, whenever it looks like you're about to lose your opening, just dash over the monster and dive down so you don't miss out on that big damage. And of course, if you do happen to have Tetra Seal slash equipped, don't forget that following the final Tetra Seal attack, you can press X to seamlessly weave back into your combo. So a very nice flow of just A, A, X, repeat is actually a good way to rack up damage. Yes, the time commitment is slightly larger, so you won't necessarily be able to use this for every opening, but if the monster is down and you pair this with a nice powder type Kinsect, I've got a blast one in this situation, then during the Tetra Seal animation, your Kinsect is automatically sent out. It's attacking with you. Of course, the cloud will be in the vicinity since you're attacking that location. So you'll also get the cloud procs. So if you have something like blast, it's some nice added damage. So again, a good option for a different switch skill. Give those a try, see how they feel, and have some fun with it. Honestly, the Insect Glaving Rise is probably the most enjoyable it's ever been, so take to the skies and unleash hell. So, now that we've gone through all of these switch skills, moves, and recommended combos, the question remains which switch skills are best for you? Ultimately, the best ones are the ones you're going to enjoy the most. However, there are some definite picks that I think stand out above the rest. In the first slot, I actually still prefer Leaping Slash. The new Advancing Round Slash is awesome, and the ability to leap up into the air from being attacked, as well as a means to shortcut to a higher damage level for the aerial moves, is nice. But Leaping Slash is fast, it's a good distance closer, and it just more fluidly fits into your overall Insect Glaive flow. Largely speaking, you'll be using other combos anyway, but for the speed alone, I pick Leaping Slash. In the second slot, I personally still use Tornado Slash. That final hit is such a great flinch move. Plus, single damage wise, it's too good to pass up. I will say if you're messing around with the powder type Kinsects and maybe fighting something a little slower, then Tetra Seal Slash does have some great utility. Damage wise, it's fantastic, and being able to seamlessly dive back into a combo, given a nice opening, it's a great move. But again, for ground combo damage alone, it's really hard to beat Tornado Slash. And then for the final slot, it has to go to Diving Wyvern. The damage on the unbuff move alone is fantastic, but when you factor in how well it synergizes with the Insect Glaive's ability to power up in the air, this move is just incredible. Recall Kinsect is nice from a mobility standpoint and does allow you to just dive back into combat right away, which in itself can reduce any potential downtime, but honestly, the Diving Wyvern damage, paired with it just being a really cool move, that's my pick. Again, feel free to use what works for you or what you enjoy the most, but if you were wondering what I run, then that's my setup.
Now that we've covered all of your moves, the last thing you need to absolutely master this weapon is a good armor set. So when it comes to making your mix sets, here are some armor skills that are definitely worth considering. The first set of skills are skills that, in truth, pretty much all weapons can benefit from, and that's your typical damage focus stack. Skills like Attack Boost, Agitator, Peak Performance, Critical Eye, Critical Boost, Weakness Exploit, Blazer Power, or even Maximum Might, these are all great attack and affinity boosting skills that can synergize nicely with this weapon. Additionally, Razor Sharp is a nice skill to have since it will help you maintain your sharpness levels for longer, especially handy if you happen to be running, say, the Nagakuga Glaive with white sharpness so you can really get the most out of it. If you want to lean a little bit more into elemental or status side of things, then the Glaive does have some relatively fast combos, so you can get a little bit of value out of elemental and status skills, and things like critical elements. But honestly, a lot of the time, just running a straight up damage sharpness build is pretty reliable. Of course, you can lean more into the aerial side of the weapon and grab a skill like Master Mounter if you really want to focus on getting those Wyvern rides, but honestly, that's definitely not a necessary pick. Outside of that, just grab some skills that synergize nicely with your chosen playstyle, and you'll be pretty much good to go. So now that we've gone through all of your available moves, your switch skills, even some armor skill recommendations, it's time to title together in a quick combat demo. This is the section of the video where we quickly cut together a few different clips showing all that stuff we've spoken about in action so you can get an idea as to how the flow plays out in combat. This is against a high rank Rathian, again a monster that is incredibly telegraphed but really good to practice against, so if you're trying to learn a weapon then it's a good place to start. To begin with, in this situation, of course, we are uh, running up to Rathian. We're going to draw straight into the Kinsect. I'm using the Carnage Beetle here, again, which is that assist type. It's the blunt type, and of course, it's the dual color. So it now means that it will attack with me in certain attacks. It will also, of course, make gathering very quick. As you can see, I know I got hit by the tail there. Slightly unfortunate, but you can see just with two simple send out of the Kinsect, I've already got the triple buff, which is very handy. And uh, generally speaking, again, as we sort of discussed, the flow, if you have a pretty quick opening, will be that double A combo. It's Tornado Slash, but anytime Rathian is in the sky, it's a great chance to... You're obviously not going to get the triple aerial attacks, but you can, of course, you know, get one in and then line up a, uh, a nice sort of Wyvern dive or a diving Wyvern in those situations. Again, to make sure you don't overcommit, because if you spend too long trying to rack it up, while it might be tempting to go for that increased aerial damage, sometimes you just simply don't have the window. Shortly after this, Bishartan turned up, they had a battle, so jumping forward to the next section, Rathian's down off the back of the Wyvern ride, so again, prime position here just to use your standard A combo, you know, you don't necessarily need to lean into your aerial stuff when the monster is down, it's just very very quick to get in some quick damage, again, positioning wise, you really want to try and sort of be on the head, keep in mind that second Tornado Slash does move you, so you do need to sort of like factor that in, but again, anytime Rathian jumps up, great position to jump up. And in that situation, you don't necessarily even have to power up the aerial move. Just a strong Wyvern dive, even on its own, does still do great damage. Yes, obviously, given the opening, you want to get more out of it. But sometimes, just a quick jump up, great way to knock it out of the sky. And again, you can then chain together some more aerial moves because uh, the opening is there. After that, might as well use the flash in the uh, the arena. Again, nicely lines up the head for uh, some more sort of follow-up attacks. Now, you can see that we are, of course, closing in on the buff running out. Remember, your number one priority will always be for you to kind of like replenish your buff. So once this does run out, we will, of course, need to uh, re-factor that in. You know, I've just lost it right now. So it now means that my aerial attacks have changed. So first protocol is, again, just gather that back. Even if you can't get the orange buff, depending on what you're fighting, you know, we got it there. But sometimes you can just grab a quick red buff, so at least your attacks are decent, or at least grab red and white, then you get that little uh, attack boost, but that sets you up nicely. But anyway, for the time being, that is pretty much it. I'll leave a little bit more gameplay running in the background, but that is pretty much everything you need to know about the Insect Blade. I really hope this has been helpful for you guys. Again, if you have any questions, by all means let me know in the comments down below. We put a ton of work, a ton of research into this. So if it is helpful, definitely do share it with some friends. If we missed anything, by all means let us know. You know, we do try and go through and make sure we cover absolutely everything, but occasionally there are sort of small things we miss. So let us know down below. And of course, if there are like noteworthy things, we can always follow up in the future with uh, bonus videos should we need. Anyway, that's your Insect Glaive. Take to the skies, have a lot of fun with it, and of course, keep it locked for plenty more Weapon Workshops. If you want to catch more from us at Arix Gaming, don't forget you can catch the guys 269 Paradise Central and Vestmore streaming over on Twitch weekdays, playing a variety of games. If you guys want to jump in, tune in, watch, and even join in, then make sure you check them out. The links to those are in the description box down below. And of course, you can join the Discord to get involved in all of the discussions.